you, uh, picture about uh, whether it is allowed. This is um, a question which I received from uh, a sister who does not want to uh, wants to be mentioned. That is it allowed to uh, make uh, photographs? Is it allowed to use pictures? Now the answer to that is uh, Bismillah rahman rahim If uh, pictures would not be allowed in Islam, then first of all I would not be here uh, live uh, in front of you, uh, because uh, this even though this is live. Even though this is life, and after this life program, you will be able to see the repeat of this program. But remember, uh, any movie, any movie is all movies are made from different thousands and thousands of pictures together, co a collection of pictures together. Uh, and, and these movies or these cartoons, for example, they all consist of various uh, pictures. Uh, and then when they are combined and they are, then they are played, then this becomes a movie. Now, the common misunderstanding about picture basically is that since the Holy Prophet ﷺ in his life, he said that if there is a house in which there is a picture, or if, if there is a house in which there is a dog, then the angels of Rahmah do not enter the house. Uh, because of this hadith, uh, and there is another hadith, for example, which is also authentic, that the Holy Prophet ﷺ said those people who, who make surahs, uh, who make uh, pictures on the Day of Judgment, or uh, who make idols on the Day of Judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will order them that uh, now you made these creations, you made these uh, pictures, or you, now you, 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 you made these drawings actually, and uh, these idols now put life into them. So by uh, these two hadiths, sahih hadiths, authentic hadiths, some people, uh, and they, these people are now currently uh, in the minority. These people then say and they think and they, their conclusion is that pictures are haram, are forbidden. And they say every picture is forbidden and haram. And they generalize the saying of, and the hadith of the Prophet wasallam. We go to our next caller, inshallah, I will come back to this point. point. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Hello, assalamu alaikum. Oh, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Yes, carry on, please. Um, I'm here to ask why are men allowed to wear gold or silk? Why are men not allowed to wear gold and silk? Yeah. Where are you calling from and what is your name, please? Um, my name is Bilal. MashaAllah, Bilal. And where are you calling from? And I'm calling from Seven Kings. Okay, MashaAllah. Jazakumullah. Thank you London. for your question. Uh, so uh, I was talking about the, the, the implementation of, of pictures and, and the hukum of pictures in Islam. Some people uh, who say this, for example, about pictures, as I said, uh, those who, uh, who say that it is totally prohibited to uh, make pictures, to take photographs, or even they, some people, they say that to come in movies or to, to make a movie of a person, this is all forbidden, this is all haram. Now, they t have this evidence. Now, I would like to quote here an evidence from the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And remember, dear viewers, this is an evidence which I will quote from Sahih al-Bukhari. And after that, I will give you some other arguments, references, and some other uh, points to think about. But first, this hadith. This is a hadith uh, which Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was in the house of Sayyida Aisha radiallahu anha. And there was a curtain in the house of Sayyidina Aisha, Sayyida Aisha radiallahu anha, which had uh, drawings of, uh, according to some narrations, horses, and according to some narrations, uh, uh, camels. And Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he removed that curtain. He removed that curtain from that place. Now this is a hadith which uh, gives us very important points. One important point in this hadith is that if drawings uh, and pictures were, be, were prohibited and whatsoever, and every kind of picture would be prohibited, every kind of painting or drawing would be uh, or prohibited, then that curtain which was in the house of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. The question is, how did it enter the house of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam? If something is haram, if something is prohibited, then such a thing, such a thing will never uh, be brought in the house of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Nobody would dare to, to let it enter the house of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Whether he is a sahabi or she is a wife of uh, Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. The curtain 
being in the house of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the Hujra of Sayyida Aisha tells us that that it was already in and if it was would be prohibited it would never be there at the first place secondly uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in this hadith we see that holy prophet removed that curtain the hadith doesn't say that holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam took it out and threw throw or threw the curtain from his house or he threw it he, it never says this, it just says that he removed the curtain from that place. Now the muhaddisin, uh, the, the scholars of hadith, they have, uh, they, have, they have thought about this hadith and they went to the dirayat of this hadith, the understanding of this hadith. And many of them, they say that in reality, Rasulullah was performing salat. And he was going to perform salat, but that curtain was in front of him. So he removed that curtain from there and then he prayed. So this hadith gives us an, a very important ruling. A ruling that when you are going to pray, no picture whatsoever should be in front of you. And the fuqaha even go further than this. They say it should be not on the right side and it should be not on the left side. We go to a next caller, inshallah. I'll come back to this point. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. MashaAllah, Dr. Fab, I just want to say that it's a wonderful program. Jazakumullah khairan. And uh, keep it up. Jazakumullah and also, I just want to say that uh, we need more programs like this, English programs. Therefore, the youngsters yeah. especially, the, uh, this day and age, we need the youngsters, you know, listen to these question and answers, True. which have more programs. Mm -hmm. True. Brother, where and, uh, are you calling from, by the way? I'm calling from Sheffield. And what's your name? It's Raja. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. I just want to ask uh, just a few questions about his Alik Islam. Just cutting up from uh, what a different brother asked. So to say, if uh, if his if his early if his early Islam is still alive, how can we meet him? And uh, what sort of wazaf do we need to read to meet him? And also, recording his early Islam, some of the scholars say that he is still alive after Ibn Kafir. So, if we meet him, are we regarded as a tabi? I just want to mm -hmm. shed some light on this, if you can, please. Subhanallah, mashallah, mashallah. And just keep, 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 up, keep up the great work. You're doing a great job. May Allah bless you more. Jazakumullah khairan. Amin. Oh, okay. Amin. Thank you very much. So uh, about uh, the pictures, that this hadith, uh, in which I just mentioned about the curtain in the house of Sayyidina Rasulullah wasallam gives us some important uh, points to think about. That first of all, Rasulullah wasallam uh, in his house, the curtain was already there. And then the hadith says that he didn't remove it outside of his house. He just removed it from that place. He didn't throw it out or took it out fr from his house. Now, remember dear brothers and sisters, Islam is a universal religion. Islam is a religion which is implementable, applicable, not only 1400 years ago, it is applicable in each and every century, in each and every time, whether it is 2008, whether it is 2008. Islam is applicable until the day of judgment. If, if pictures would be not allowed, every picture, if every picture would not be allowed, then Islam would be basically a religion of Caves, a religion of, uh, of uh, which is not practical in this, uh, practical in this uh, modern day and life anymore. Because nowadays, we see many people, they gain knowledge. And mo mo most of the libraries now are on the, on the internet, are internet-based now. So most of the students, when they have to ask, when they have to make some, uh, they, they have to make a homework, for example, they use internet. Internet is a source of knowledge nowadays. And when one uses the internet, there are always pictures, whether they are advertisements, doesn't matter. But there are always pictures. If Islam would be a religion which tells us that pictures are not allowed whatsoever, then basically we cannot use internet and basically we cannot gain knowledge. A TV, for example, is a source of knowledge nowadays. TV in itself, it, not, it is not halal or it is not haram. It's not permitted, it's not permiss, it's not halal or it's not haram. It is mubah. It is up to you how you use the TV. If you use it for good ways, if you use it for knowledge, to increase your knowledge, your religious knowledge, your spiritual knowledge, your knowledge of this dunya, scientific knowledge, for example, then this is a good way of using TV. And this is, uh, this is permissible. But in the same way, if you have a TV and you use it for your evil uh, a desires, evil uh, wishes which, which uh, a human being uh, possesses. If you, for example, watch pornography on the same TV, then this is haram, this is uh, prohibited. Islam is a practical religion. Nowadays, nowadays, 
when doctors or when stu medical students go to the universities go to their colleges then they don't have to only deal with pictures pictures of human bodies but at the same time there are idols made there are idols made there are uh, uh, idols made uh, of human of the human body in which uh, the